I've got what looks like a ginger jar. I don't know if it's whole, but we will find out soon. Underneath the soil or hidden in the ground There's a lot of treasures to be found Dirty secrets Dirty secrets of Scotland Hello and welcome to Dirty Secrets of Scotland at the Bottle Tip very excited about today after the dig I had last time so I'm going down the same spot I'll show you next I went down here behind me and I'm going down there I'll show you what I mean now you can see maybe this is a line that's what I dug the last time and now I'm just advancing forwards into the fresh so fingers crossed for some good finds oh yeah and let's get digging Had a few broken bits, bricks, broken things, but I also had this to dig down, which is cool. Not seen one like this before. Nice wee bottle, it's an encouraging start. All right, let's crack on. Just had this little pour link. These are really popular on our Etsy store, so it's good to find them. Keeps the channel going. Can't read that. Oh, I think it's love it and love it again. No damage, so yeah, get that up on the Etsy store. If anyone's interested, check it out. Just had a few bits come out. That's just a bovril, but you can see the remains of a label. If that had been dug before, that label would not be there. <laughs> um, and also, if I leave that, That'll fade in the light, which I will do actually. I'll just leave it on the bag. Um, roll top jar. Got a nice age to it, this. See the other drippy lippy. Cool. I use these for painting and stuff, I like them, they're nice. Actually, if anyone would like these, I'll put them up on Etsy, but no one's requested them yet, so I use them myself. Um, and this is a, it's a medicine, amber medicine, but Plain. It does have the remains of a label, but it's mush. Um, oh, it's not plain at all. Hang on. Oh, I've had one of these before, Rio Chemical. Yeah, New York. I think this is a quack cure, actually. The last one I found was cracked on the base, and this one isn't. So that's cool. That'll replace the one that's broken. Ah, cool. Okay, embossed medicines. Here we go. American one, too. Also, I had this little base, uh, sorry, lid which made me go, when I came up that way, so I immediately rubbed it, <laughs> couldn't help it. And uh, yeah, it's plain, unfortunately. Also, it's milk glass, not porcelain. All right, let's crack on. Literally, having just explained that, I put the spade back in the ground and found another plain lid. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Sarah and I use these for crafting, so that's okay. All right, let's crack on. Just found this. World's smallest teacup. Sadly, it's missing its handle. However, it's very cute anyway. Look at that. Flowers. Very nice indeed. Got a common ball, the Dinnerford's Magnesia, but it's nice, it's got age to it, so that's good, it's encouraging. Just had happen exactly the same as last time. So I was digging down in my usual rectangle, it became apparent that only one corner had whole stuff coming out, and also the ash is ash, it's not mixed through. So I think the majority of the hole, apart from one corner, has actually been dug, you know, 30 years ago or so. So what I'm doing is I'm concentrating on the corner again that I'm finding the fresh ash, and the first thing to come out first hole bottle is this and it's really got aged to it, it's a Argonaut Reg. I think I've actually got one of these bottles before, however the one that I had was clear. So this is an earlier bottle and it's lovely. Trippy lippy, nice wee bottle that, so that's encouraging. So I'll keep going at that corner and uh, hopefully find some good stuff. Just had this large whiskey flask. 
trippy lippy, very nice. It's uh, plain, but uh, I like it anyway. It's got a nice presence too, I think. Cool. There we go. Nice big dark green aqua glass. Or maybe just green. I think it might be a machine made this one because there's a line here. So early machine made then. It's nice though, it's got bubbles in it and things. It's a cool bottle. Anything on the bottom? Nope. <laughs> Like my new hat. I'm actually using it as a parasol today because it's so sunny which makes a change. If you've been watching this channel for a while you'll have seen I've been, I've been cowering underneath it in the rain and using it to stop the wind and actually it is quite windy but um, there's a line of trees over there that's stopping the wind getting to me but at the tops. So yeah it's windy at the tops of the trees but down here there's no wind at all it's so strange. Not that I'm complaining, I don't like it when it's really windy because it's hard to make videos in high winds. Just had a couple of bits. The standard Bovro. This one's an 8 ounce. Couple of a Bovro. And then this, which I think is more local. I think that this is a Glasgow bottle. Just by the shape of it. Yeah, it is. It's uh, Adam's Essence of Rennet Glasgow. For those of you that want to see the bottom there. Yep, nice bottle, undamaged. Okay, let's keep going. Just had this. And I actually had to pick the camera up because I couldn't get it on the screen. It's massive. Look at it. I don't think it's going to have enough, anything on it. And I think it's early machine made. But look at that for a skittle bottle. It's huge! Uh, oh look, it's got a skittle bottle underneath. It's got an illustration of one. I think I may have found one of these when I first started actually. On this tip. From memory. Nice bottle though. And uh, I also had a plane, just a plane, medicine as well, just beside it. So, full bottles are coming out. Let's keep going. Just had an HP sauce at the bottom there. It's rusty. I think it's undamaged. It's also full of water. Nice. Just had an avalanche of cream. Here, <laughs> yeah. there was two, and amongst all this rusty stuff, they just fell out as I was digging in. This one's damaged. I haven't flipped the other one over yet. Yep, <laughs> it's all yes, that's an absolute belter. Again, perseverance. Oh, sorry, I'm out of breath. All right. It's always a wee bit of a heartbreaker when you find a broken cream pot. I mean, look how thick they are as well. It's crazy. They must have hit the floor with some force or, I don't know, got chucked in the, in the rocks or... Because, I mean, there is actually a lot of bricks here as well, so it could be that, but... Anyway, so thick. But, it's not so bad when you find another one right beside. <laughs> All right. And actually, if anything, this seems like the lighter one out of the two. Seems like it's slightly... Because, I mean, they're handmade, so some are thinner than others. But yeah, it doesn't seem to be damaged at all. Um. Underneath the soil or buried in the ground There's a lot of treasure to be found Dirty secrets, dirty secrets of Scotland just had this ball here, on the bottom. Oh, it's, man it's a machine made, sorry. That surprises me. It looks really old. Yeah. Early machine made. I think it's actually got... Yep. 
got a big root in it. <laughs> and behind that, this Gleefield leaving. Oh, damaged on the top there. I'll probably end up cutting that down then. It's not like a really old bottle or anything, it's machine made as well, early machine made. So yeah, I'll cut that down and make it into a glass. Just had this. Yep, it's an Eiffel Tower lemonade. Found a few of these. Most of them are clear though, but I like it when I find them in aqua. So chuff for that. And that will be the last bottle before lunchtime. So I'll have the lunchtime round up and then we'll get on. I have to tidy up first though, it's a mess. <laughs> Lunchtime roundup. Okay, I'll start here. Just some plain stonewares and pouring one, which is nicely stamped. Um, probably the very fine so far. I'm not doing this in any particular order. Put it done ragged. Love finding my printed stoneware. Mudlark control. Don't know why that's there. And um, little perfume bottle. This is actually the top or a top to the type of ginger beer that I found recently which is grand because that will go home and go straight into my ginger that I just found it may even be the one from it because it was very nearby anyway um, plain lid, plain lid and another plain lid over there I'll probably forget that and say that twice <laughs> this is this uh, Rio Chemical Company I did a feature on this a little while ago so if you haven't seen it it'll be over on another episode um, I don't know which one it is right now at the tip. Um, this is uh, this uh, Eiffel Tower lemonade. It's just a square, drippy lippy uh, jar, aqua glass, a huge Leon Perrins, Worcestershire sauce, Dinnerford's magnesia, Scottish ball, which is always nice. I think that'll come up really well. It looks really sparkly, that's cool. Um, a big ball roll. Oh yeah, that reminds me, this is the Bovril that I showed you earlier, remember it was quite a bright red? That's what the sunlight's done to it, and that's under the umbrella as well. By the end of the dig that'll be completely white. The label will be just completely gone. Anyway, um, medicine's just plain. HP sauce, um, whiskey flask type bottle, um, this huge, <laughs> enormous um, Skittle bottle in green. Local... Um, Maybe mineral water, I think, for lemonade. Uh, another sauce bottle, I think that's Yorkshire Relish. This green bottle, which will come up lovely, I think. Another whiskey flask, a bigger one. Again, nothing on it. I should I didn't check the bottom. And it wasn't worth it anyway. And then this wee bottle. Another perfume type of bottle. And, uh, and that's it for now. So... Uh, I'll put all that over there and then start making a collection in round two. Just found this heartbreaker, wee mini flagging. Hopefully I'll find more of it because that's the important part, the writing. I could repair the rest of it if I find more of it. Um, right now there's not enough to repair, but let's keep looking. Just had this. It's a pub tile, a wall tile, or the tile or whatever. But um, I usually find them broken. In fact, I don't think I've ever found a full coloured one like that. Normally they're broken or just plain white. That's cool. Higher than this, I wish someone would give me a hand. Just had this. It's one of these Symington bottles or Symington bottles. Coffee and chicory. Now, I've had a few of these, but one I've never had one with the stopper in it, which I've just taken out. And two, I've never had a green one. <laughs> Is it drippy lippy? I can't tell. 
I'm not sure if it's drippy lippy or not. It's got water in it. That's so cool. Love that. I think it must be drippy lippy. It's very crude. That's amazing. I love that. That'll go in my collection because I'm doing a an ombre different colours from dark to light and this will now be by far the darkest one which is really cool. I'm well happy with that. I just checked it and it is a drippy lippy with the stopper in it and it's green. I've never seen a green one. I've seen aqua ones. Loads of them and I mean loads of them but that is properly bottle green. I love that and therefore I've upped it to the status of an absolute stotar. Just had this as well. Nice. Lightly embossed. But oh, it's like a curry ball. Blob top. Quite often these are sick, so I'm hoping this one isn't. It looks pretty clear actually. There's stuff inside it, but that'll probably come away when I wash it. I hope. Um, but yeah, Kirkcaldy ball, Glossary plant, Lady Bank and Dunfermline, Kirkcaldy. Blob top, drippy lippy, probably 1920s. Happy days. Just had this. I'm assuming that it's a vase. Oh no, it's not. It was a jug because it's got like broken handle here. I just wonder if I could. Oh wait, not one handle. <laughs> Two. Would have been up like that. Nice. Don't know if it's worth repairing that. What does it say on the bottom? 1780. Oh, I don't think that's when it was made. What does that say? Brett. Brett. B Brett. No, you can't read it. It's cool though. I might try and repair that in some way. I'm thinking maybe I could grind these off and then build the top up and make it into like a one flower vase. Hmm. Maybe. Well, this looks like a HP sauce. Um, I think there is the remains of a label there, but this tip is just so wet, it just destroys labels. So it's not even worth trying to preserve. It's just mush. Anyway. Here we go. I'm not sure if it was originally this shape. Um, it might have been melted in the fire or something. I'm not entirely sure though, because they do make them wonky sometimes, as they used to. Carton's HP sauce. It's a nice colour, actually. Very nice colour. It's that sort of... See that there? Bluish. It's almost a nice blue or cornflower blue, as it's known in the States. Nice. Just had another leaving bottle out. The one I had in the first half. Still quite lightly embossed, I think. Oh, maybe not. Maybe it's just dirt. <laughs> uh, doesn't seem there was any damage in this one, which is nice. Okie doke. There you go. Adamson's leaving. Pictorial. Nice. For the water. Caving in the side there. Yes, 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 yes. Please be. Oh, don't drop it, will he? Uh. What a beauty. Looks like it's complete. Oh, nice. Not to be taken. Two ounce. Lovely. What a belter. Really chuffed with that. It's been a hard dig today, actually. Um, shifted a lot of soil. Well, you can see, look, I've shifted all of that all the way to where those bottles are, around there, and all of this as well. So, I'm gonna be stiff tonight. 
Anyway, that's cool, right? Okay, let's crack on. I just had this, and I think this is quite a common bottle in the south in England, but here, I've never seen one before. Wow, look. That would have been a label. No, it was mush. Yeah, I've never, I've never actually seen one of these before, so this is cool. Holbrook's sauce. Is there anything on the bottom? Nope, just a recess. Lovely. Actually picking up now. It was dead for a while, but now it's really picking up, so I'm chuffed. <laughs> Seems it's all about the sauces in the minute. Another HP sauce. It's an early one though. See, I've had that right off the bottom with the sand and the rust there. Nice. And then also this, which is another one of these tiles, which is how I usually find them cracked in two. So it's nice to find the whole one. Don't know what I'm going to do with them like, but I'll figure it out. I think what I've found here is a book which I've now fanned out and uh, you can't see anything because it's completely black but this has been in the light for about five minutes now and you see that? Something's starting to come out. So I'm going to keep that in the light and just see what happens. We'll come back to this in a little while and see what it says. But the best thing I could get is a date off it. But, uh, well, we'll just see. It's the history bit. This book, as I thought it was, turned out to be advertising material for the brand Slazenger, a popular sporting goods company. It appears that someone almost a hundred years ago used this as a fire lighter, as it's heavily scorched. However, I was able to get a date from it. 1925. Slazenger was founded in 1881 by brothers Ralph and Albert Slazenger. Ralph Slazenger left his native Manchester and opened a shop on London's Cannon Street selling rubber sporting goods. Slazenger quickly became a leading manufacturer of sporting equipment for golf and tennis. Four years after the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club held its first ever championships, Slazenger produced the new game of lawn tennis, complete in a box. In 1902, Slazenger was appointed as the official tennis ball supplier to the championships at Wimbledon, and it remains the longest unbroken sporting sponsorship in history. During the Second World War, Slazenger redirected its production to manufacture a wide variety of items for military purposes, utilising Slazenger's expertise in wood and rubber manufacturing. Some examples of what they made were machine gun carbine butts, bayonet grip handles, detonator caps, gloves and goggles. On the 15th of September 1940, during the Blitz on London, bombs fell on the Slazenger factory. Slazenger were able to continue production at other facilities, but began a series of mergers with competing companies. Slazenger are still major manufacturers of sporting goods, even to this day. Just had this and I rubbed it because I thought it was plain. These bottles are always plain. <laughs> this one is not. J. Grossmith and Son, Newgate, London. I think I've seen this company before, actually. Maybe even features them. I can't remember now. But yeah, J. Grossmith and Son, Newgate, London. And I think that's, uh, is it ground or is it sheer? Anyway, perfume, I think. Very nice. So a nice wee ink there. Green. Yeah, this is the kindest in the credits. Beside the, the blue ink. I'm not sure if that's a ding out of it or if it's a bubble. I think it actually might be a bubble. 
Very nice, I like that. Just have this green ball, lovely. I think it's plain though, but that's okay. In medicine. And it's got a W on the bottom, as usual. Lovely. Tool lip, no damage. Excellent. Get that up on the Etsy store then, if you're interested. I'm pretty sure that'll go quickly. I've got what looks like a ginger jar. They're right on the sand, which makes it easy because you just dig away the sand underneath it. Don't know if it's whole, obviously. Well, but we will find out soon because I'll just dig under it and then pull it down. Just like that. <laughs> Okay, I need to take a wee bit more from the top. What I don't want to do is go in too hard and break it. That's a piece of iron there as well. A steel diamond. Oh. Hey! I think it's whole! <laughs> That's an absolute belter. Let's get it out. Yay! Oh. Sand. I'm always hoping a wee poison falls out or something. It never does though. It's always just sand. I don't collect sand. Oh, this is lovely. I don't even think it's got any wee chips on it or anything. Normally they have little chips around the edge. Stunner. And the last one I had was green. They have lines around them. Um, and other designs as well. And the last one I had was green and this one is blue. So I love these. My collection's getting a bit ridiculous of them now. Though. I think Sarah might get me a star selling some, but I'll keep it for now. Oh yeah, and I meant to say, Just had this full of water. It's a rosies. My hands weren't filthy, they are now. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping it'd be another Dirty Secrets of Scotland thistle bottle, but it's not. It's a rosies. But drippy lippy, it's an old bottle. Wow. I don't know how I'm going to carry all this today. It started off well, got really slow picked up massively and now I've got so much stuff I don't know what I'm going to do with it all. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining folks, don't worry. But hey ho, I've got to carry all this. <laughs> Just had this and I thought, oh it's a lid, it's a different shape, different size. So it's going to be pretty, darn it's, well kind of, it's got like a blue, a blue line around it. But and a little ding out of it as well. But I was hoping it would be like a bear's grease or something like that. Not to be, unfortunately. Still nice though. Just had this. It's called a blacking pot. And it would have had a sort of wax or stuff that you rub the floors down with back in the day. It's a lovely colour though. The only ones I've got are double the size and brown or sort of creamy. This is a different one. Um, oh, I can't read that. It says something there. 42 I can read the rest I can't. But yeah that's a nice find that. Especially because I've not seen one like that here and I thought it was damaged but it's not. It's just a thing in the glaze. Lovely. It's a nice wee find. I had to bring my phone up to film this because it's so big. <laughs> Look at it. Poor Nink. As far as I can see, there's no damage. Nice. It's 
see that one that Darren found. In fact, it's probably the same one. I just love it and love it. It certainly is. Cool. I might give him that so he has a pair. Very nice. And I think that's probably going to be my last find because I am exhausted. Phew! Full time roundup. Everything here you've seen before because this was in the first half. So we'll just go over to here, the second half. So let's start on the left. Big Rosie's bottle, always nice to find. Drippy lippy, will clean up lovely, I hope. Hope it's not sick. This big ink, which I'll give to Darren. I'm sure he'll appreciate that. Then he'll have a pair. Um, this um, ginger jar, which you saw me excavating, which was fun. This is gorgeous. It's such a lovely colour. And I didn't notice the line either until this just now. So that's really cool. I really like that. Um, okay, so it's not printed or anything. It is stamped. But I don't know, it's just got a nice feel to it, so I'm keeping that. Um, this is just a plain bottle. I thought it was one of those Eno's fruit salts, but it's not. Little aqua jar. Tile. Victorian tile. This is an absolute belter. That probably should have been saved for the absolute belter at the end. Um, plain medicine, plain medicine, green medicine. Which I'll definitely keep. This would have been an absolute belter, except for the fact that it's smashed. So what I think I'll do is I'll try and um, try and build this up potentially, or just wait until I find another one and then, you know, make the base of another one a donor for the top. This is the most important part. If this was broken or missing, then it wouldn't be worth it. But that makes it worth it. I can also research that, of course. That is a big um, jigsaw puzzle. Unfortunately though, it's plain. If that was printed, I'd probably try and build that up. But it's plain, loads of it is missing. It's not worth the effort really. Sheffield pot here. I found that kicking about on the, on the ground over there, so someone else has dug that. Um, this blue lid, which is quite pretty. Perfume, another toothbrush, another ink, and plenty of them. This bowl, I think it's a sauce bowl. Um, and this, which I'm not sure if I'm going to repair or not. I think it's probably quite a lot of work. I'm not sure how good it would come out either. And then we're on to these, which is the local blob top, HP sauce. Holbrooks, well, that's a new one for me. I realise it's a common bottle, but new one for me. Uh, leaving ball and another HP sauce. Um, yeah, I guess the absolute belters from the second half would be this. Definitely that. And of course, my favourite, poison bottles. And from the first half, of course, printed Dunragget cream pot. And that's the full time roundup. Our Etsy store is updated weekly, so please do head over to Etsy to see what new items go on. You can buy the things that I'm pulling out the ground here, which is kind of cool. Also, things that we create are on there as well, so check it out. Secondly, our Kofi page. If you go over to our Kofi, you can buy us a coffee. Why not? Everyone likes a coffee. And finally, to become a patron of Dirty Secrets of Scotland, you can do so over on our Patreon. Go over to patreon.com to become a patron. Thank you so much to everyone that's bought from our Etsy store, bought us a coffee on Kofi, and also our patrons over on Patreon. You guys are absolute legends. Links to all of this are in the video description below. Actually, below, because I'm lying on the ground. Why? Felt like it? Thanks for joining me on Dirty Secrets of Scotland. This tree has been poking me in the head all day because it's been right next to the hole. Anyway, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. Until next time. All filled in. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the new section. It's called... Forager's Corner.
Today we're going foraging for wild garlic by the river Leven. Yes, and then we're going to make something delicious back in the kitchen. What's Jack Spaniel's doing? Let's get foraging! This way! Double basket foraging action! Check this out. Whole load of sticky me. Some daffodils. If you like daffodils, check out Sarah's last video. She walks, she paints. Well, she paints some wild daffies. Really, really beautiful picture. I'll put it up there. Just found a derelict house. All boarded up. How cool. Just found this. Taste ball, little one. Probably 1930s or so. Amazing what you find when you're not even looking for it. <laughs> Jack's making some friends, bovine acquaintances. That's a lot of wild garlic. It is. More than we need, probably. But we'll get through, won't we? Yeah. We're leaving plenty behind. I think it's um, safe to say. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> and this is only one tiny piece. You enjoy that, Jack? Jack, you enjoy that? Did you have fun? It looked like you did. <laughs> And here we have the wild garlic. It's just in cold water. I've given it a good swish around, given it a clean. Next, it goes into here, which is the salad spinner, by the handfuls. Then it gets spun. Once it's spun, it goes in the bowl. And then we start constructing it all. Okay, here's the ingredients. The wild garlic, which is now nice and clean. Parmesan cheese, toasted walnuts, lemon juice, freshly juiced, and some olive oil in a glass. Don't drink that, it won't be good for you. And all of that goes in here, like this. There you go, it's all in there. You can see it in the layers. Now I just need to whiz it up, like this. And there you go, it's done. Now for the official taste test by Sarah. Sarah tastes it every year, so. Here we go, Sarah. It's over to you. Okay, wild garlic pesto 2022. Drum roll. What's it like? Hmm, that's good. 
Well, we had a great day making this wild garlic pesto and we hope you enjoyed it too. Thank you for joining us on the first Forager's Corner on Dirty Secrets of Scotland. Underneath the soil or hidden in the ground There's a lot of treasures to be found Dirty Secrets Dirty Secrets of Scotland